Hello, welcome back. And today, in this video, we'll be going through the settings for the Logitech G560 RGB speakers on a Windows PC using the, the G Hub Logitech software. Here we go. The settings for the speakers are done through the Logitech G Hub software. And this also controls the settings of your other Logitech hardware like your mouse or keyboard or headphones. You can see I've got my headphones and, and mouse in here as well. So the first thing we're going to look at is the acoustic settings. Now the volume shown here is the computer volume and is controlled by the computer and so if you change that up and down then that also changes up and down. The sub level, the, the sub level, the sub level, the subwoofer level is set. That's just overall how, how the level that you want your subwoofer, subwoofer set to. Um, enable uh, advanced EQ. Oh, I'm really having trouble talking today. All right. Enable enhanced EQ. It does what it says. It gives you options there. There are some preset EQ options like cinematic, communications or bass boost. Uh, or you can do some custom presets. I generally just run on flat or disabled the other option here is surround sound I normally don't have surround sound enabled to en with enabling this it attempts to emulate a full 7.1 system out of a 2.1 system uh, if you're going to try to do this I recommend using a headset like the G 933 which I have uh, instead of using speakers uh, anybody wanting 7.1 for movies should really get a proper 7.1 system and a TV to enjoy it properly so for me this is turned off okay assignments Assignments are how you want this button to work here. I don't use this either. To me, stretching to get to the button is a waste of time. The default is the lock screen. If I want to lock the screen, I just do Windows key and L. It's a lot quicker and generally closer. There are a lot of options you can assign to it. But again, I haven't tried that. I don't see the point. It's a bit of a waste of time, if you ask me. Um, especially with it when it's connected to your computer. All right, so now that that boring stuff is out of the way, let's have a look at the lighting, the RGB, which we know is what everybody wants to see. I normally have this left in audio visualizer. What that does is whenever there's audio coming out, it will display RGB levels based on that. With the audio visualizer, what you see happening on the speakers does not replicate within the software. It's one of the few times that this happens. Uh, you can set a background set color and that will show, but the actual changing with the audio does not. I set the low color to be blue, and this is just pers complete personal reference, uh, preferences. Low, 
means very quiet sounds. High means loud sounds. And this is based on what is happening in the application that is playing the sound, not the volume level of the computer. So let's see if I can explain this clearly. If the computer volume is set to 100% and the application volume is set to 1%, and it plays a loud sound, then the light will be blue because the level of volume coming to the amplifier is quiet. If the computer is set to 1% and the application is set to 100% and plays the same sound, then the light will be red because the level of audio coming to the amplifier is loud. And that's what it's based on. Having the low color and high color will give you a gradient of color from yellows to greens, etc. between while the music is playing. As demonstrated here. The other option is fixed. And that means the system just pulses with that one color. Here down in the advanced settings, you can turn on pulse on bass only, um, turn on an audio boost, but that's just for uh, the visualization. I have that set to zero. Uh, and use, I turn off use adaptive amplitude, and that's just personal preference. You can play around with these to get it going how you want. And with the color choosing, as you saw just before, you have a, a a whole palette of colors that you can choose from you get one color and that goes basically everywhere sync lighting zones makes all the all the four zones the same so sync loading zones will make the front and back all the same color and that's it cycle does what it says it cycles through colors Again, sync lighting zones. And even though it doesn't show it on the screen, on the actual speakers, the lights are in sync. There's cycling through the colors at the same rate. Uh, the rate can be sped up or slowed down and the brightness can be changed. And that's pretty much all there is to it. The next is breathing. And breathing does, again, exactly what it says. You choose a color, uh, set the rate, sync the zones, and your speakers breathe. Now, the only thing about this is they don't breathe at the same time. No matter what this rate is, the the lights pulse and at different frequencies. Never fast, fast, fast. Uh, but there you go. The last one is screen sampler. Now this can be considered the most interesting. Now what this does is you can see the four zones here. This will, depending on what colors there are in these zones, will determine what colors come up on the speakers. So let me find a picture and you can see the um, front side lights and the back lights changing color depending on what particular color is in the boxes if you click on the edit button then you have the ability to change from where the screen sampler samples the screen color you can move these to wherever you like, and that is where the screen sampler will sample the color from the screen to light up the RGB on the speakers. Now, you may notice as you move through the options that when you go back to a previous option, this has changed back to its original settings. This is how it is at the moment, unfortunately. Profiles at the very top up here um, and I'm not going to go into changing profiles in this video. It'll make it 
far too long and maybe quite complicated don't know and thanks for watching um there are a few people who seem to have problems with the software uh it's not hugely um intuitive uh but it's not the worst i've used it's not the best i've used each each stuff seems to have its its pros and cons and it's a pain that you can't get one bit of software that talks to each bit of rgb for example i have my g g hub for my logitech stuff i have iq for my corsair stuff and then i have to use the motherboard um, gigabyte software for everything that hangs off the motherboard so that's three bits of software and you can't get them all in sync and it's a bit of a pain in the backside to be fair but there you go things we have to deal with when we're looking at rgb mm -mm -mm. thanks for watching see you next time oh smash that like button and smash that subscribe button is that is that what i meant to say cheers bye